Now that we have discussed first degree hard block as well as the Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2 of second degree hard block, we can now delve into complete heart block, also known as third degree heart block. Patients with third degree heart block classically are going to present with presyncope or syncope, as well as angina, dyspnea, and fatigue. Third degree heart block can be set off by several reversible causes, including myocardial ischemia, increased vagal tone, metabolic derangements, as well as iatrogenic causes such as AV blocking medications, including beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. And overall, the pathophysiology of third degree heart block is a failure of electrical impulses traveling from the atria to the ventricles. This ultimately results in what is known as an escape rhythm in which the ventricle starts to perform independent conduction that is independent from the conduction through the atria. As we stated on the previous slide, the pathophysiology of complete heart block is a failure of transmission from the atria to the ventricles. This can also be seen on the EKG of these patients as there will be no impulse conduction from the atria to the ventricles. The way that this manifests on the EKG is that the interval between the P waves on the EKG will be constant. Additionally, the interval between the R waves will also be constant. However, these constant intervals for the P waves and for the R waves will be occurring independently of one another. And one other additional clue that we will see on EKGs is that the ventricular rate is going to be slower than the atrial rate. And therefore, R waves will occur more infrequently than the P waves. First, we can take a look here at the bottom of our presentation where we can see that the R waves in this EKG are occurring at regular intervals. Next, as we look for the P waves, we can see that the P waves are also occurring at regular intervals. One here, one here, one here, and then one here hidden in this T wave. This continues on as we move along the EKG as we see another P wave here, another one here, another one here. And so what we can hopefully appreciate from this EKG is that the atrial rate is constant, the ventricular rate is constant, but it is not like our traditional normal rhythm in which we see conduction through the atria followed by conduction through the ventricles. And this is highly characteristic of third degree or complete heart block. We can further drive this home with this EKG, especially with this schematic at the bottom of this EKG, where you can see here up top we have the atrial rate and down below we have the ventricular rate. As you can see here, the atrial rate is going to be constant and regular. However, it is occurring independently of the ventricular rate, which is also regular in terms of its rhythm, but conducting independently from the atria. This is once again going to be appreciated in our EKG, where we can see that these R waves are occurring at regular intervals compared to one another. However, if we then take a look for our P waves, we can see that these P waves are also occurring at regular intervals, however, they are occurring independently from the R waves. And yes, this is highly characteristic, once again, of third degree heart block, as there is a complete dissociation between conduction through the atria and the ventricles. Our first step in the management of our patients with third degree heart block is going to be to evaluate for reversible causes. As we mentioned, myocardial ischemia, as well as medications with slow conduction through the AV node can contribute to this condition. Ultimately, if our patient is symptomatic and has third degree heart block, they're absolutely going to need a pacemaker as definitive management. We also must make sure in these patients that we are not giving AV blocking medications, such as beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. And the reason it is so essential that we place a pacemaker in patients with complete heart block is that if this condition is left untreated, these patients could ultimately go on to progress to develop asystole, arrhythmias, and even death. 